What's up, guys? Here with you, FC Wonder Kid, episode 155. Here with my guy, Bretson. How are you? I'm doing great. I, I am so, so happy that we have all found Erling Holland once again. <laughs> Erling Holland is back with a poker. Mm -hmm. Erling Holland is back and taking that golden boot race by the throat and mm -hmm. saying, no, Cole Palmer, nope, Alexander Izak, nope, it's mine. <laughs> uh, you got you to gotta love it because you all True. knew it was coming. But my goodness, that, that, that crescendo of the... Is Erling Holland that good? <sighs> it, it was it was really starting to grow, wasn't it? Mm. I mean, what we saw, what I saw on Twitter, what I saw, or I'm sorry, on X, uh, it was really, really interesting over that time. But we all knew that that type of a performance, True. Uh, it was only a matter of time. But listen, it doesn't get rid of the what? It doesn't get rid of the ghosting in the really, really big games type of critique yes. that is currently following him. But hey. He's mm -hmm. back on top, and uh, that's like just scraping the surface of all the stuff we're going to talk about in this particular podcast. So Very let true. me ask you, Alex, how are you doing, sir? I am doing really well. Football is giving us answers, and that's what we need. Yes. In this podcast, we're going to talk about European leagues, Ballon d'Or, Star mm -hmm. Bench, Cell Edition. I'm going to go bold with you, Bretson. MLS, mm. we're going to talk about that. And Real Madrid have won La Liga, okay? And PSV, yep. and Edivis, because this podcast talks about all these leagues okay so might as well right. like this podcast okay on youtube follow us on spotify follow us on apple podcasts and make sure you comment down below opinions if you agree or disagree with our statements and you started with holland and i'll go with you bretson because holland has 25 goals in the premier league and we all know when he arrived in the Prem, he was going to be the top goal scorer every single se season, Erling Haaland. Kane even knew it, and he left. Kane left. Mm -hmm. 36 <laughs> goals last season, 25 this one, uh, and we know next season who's going to be the top goal scorer. It's not Hoyland. Yeah. It's not Isaac. It's going to be Erling Haaland. Victor, you get it, Pedro. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. But it was you never know. Fourth of May was a special date, not just for Star Wars, mm -hmm. Star Wars fans, but for Portu uh, for football fans. Okay, we had Holland mm -hmm. with four goals. We had Cristiano yep. with a hat trick. We had Messi mm. with five assists. It was phenomenal to see. And yes, Man City yep. by beating Wolves five one. In my views, in mm -hmm. everyone's views, I think Man City are favorites to win the Premier League. Fourth time in a yeah. row, Haaland scores four goals. It's all meant to happen on the 4th of May. It's like I someone so. saying it, the 4th is going to happen, okay, people? Mm -hmm. But no, it's, it's a really interesting thing. And to go along, another stat, Man City have the best team in the Premier League. And to prove this, players with most hat-tricks in the last two Premier League seasons... Haaland mm -hmm. has six, Foden has three. No more players have more than two. Man City are dominating the Prem. De Bruyne, Khadri, so many world-class players. And Haaland and Foden yeah, isn't, are two of them. Isn't it funny that the four goals in 54 minutes uh, overshadows yet another ridiculous game from Phil Foden? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just it's funny how that's that's even it's it's it's, it's not even a talking point for the most uh, part True. and he has been absolutely stellar and frankly more consistent than Erling Holland uh, and this Reiner. particular season he had the injury yeah. I say Phil yeah. Foden uh, Phil Foden and Rodri are the two most important players of Man City the Bruyne was injured mm -hmm. Holland was injured at certain given points in the season it's unbelievable mm -hmm. the development that Guardiola has done when Phil Foden. He's the best talent I've True. seen in England when I watched that under-17 under England squad in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. And now, mm -hmm. the growth of this player is insane. Insane. Is. So, is. Man City, favorites. Arsenal, great win. Okay, Arsenal, great mm -hmm. win. I quite, I'm quite worried about Martinelli, though. Okay, I don't want... It's a whole other topic. I want to keep it positive. But Arsenal sure. have a real problem on the left-hand side. Okay, Trossard is a very good player, but a left back is needed and uh, maybe another winger. Okay, so yeah. let us know your thoughts if you agree or disagree. Okay, a striker. But, but, an, <laughs> but another another solid game from Declan Rice. Um, True. Kind of getting swept under the rug. I think Declan he had a goal, an assist. Would um, be the signing I of mean, the season, if not Cole Palmer. And did you, <laughs> did you have Declan? How close was Declan Rice to your top 10? In of Ballon the Ballon d'Or. I yeah, I don't put I, I don't put Declan there. Rice I don't put Odegaard I put I don't put Saka in the top ten of the Ballon d'Or. Sorry, Arsenal fans. Yeah, right. 
But I mean, how close <laughs> would he be? Because I feel like Declan Rice deserves to be higher than Bukaya Saka to the top 10. I agree. He'd my be opinion. my 10th to 20th in the Ballon d'Or talk, Declan okay. Rice. For the season he's had, very important. He's worked very well at Arsenal. Uh, Champions League yep. quarter finalist, second in the Premier League. If it all goes to plan with uh, with Man City winning, so yeah, mm -hmm. I think Declan Rice is no. Let's let's Declan Rice is one of the top three defensive midfielders in the world, and that deserves to be in the yeah. talk of a Ballon d'Or top thirty list. Oh, well, <laughs> I would top thirty. I mean, I I if I think I had him eleventh or twelfth in Oish, mind. Interesting. Um, yeah, interesting. just from uh, how important he has absolutely been. Uh, mm. For them this season, and and yeah, I mean, where would you have a Cole lot of Palmer that? So, <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, I'm joking. well, well, no, I actually I, I need to look at that because I don't remember where I have Cole Palmer. Um, <laughs> but yeah, another goal for him this particular weekend, and all of a sudden, Chelsea's pepping up. But listen, mm. I, the one thing I wanted to make sure that we talked about was we, yeah, mm -hmm. Erling Holland with the poker not only overshadowed Phil Foden's game, not only overshadowed, uh, he also overshadowed. A uh, guy like Alexander Izak, mm -hmm. who for Newcastle, they needed something, right? They needed True. a kick in the butt to get them closer to European competition, to salvage something from this particular season that has been tough for them injury-wise. But if there is one thing uh, that we needed proof of this season, it was, was Alexander Izak worth the money? Fact. And I think he has answered that. He has put that to rest because 20 goals this season in the Premier League before Erling Holland then, you know, left him behind. Mm -hmm. But 20 goals this season for him uh, is incredible. I think it's phenomenal considering it's mm -hmm. a real big first full season, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not injury uh, related this particular season for them. And I think he is somebody that while... I don't think he can go toe to toe with Holland, but he is somebody that can start to be that 25 to 27 goals a year. Is Alexander year Isak the best the Swedish League. striker in the world? <laughs> You're setting me up for that. You're setting me up for that. Is he? I, here, here's what I got to say. No, no, he's ah, not. Victor Gokeres. <laughs> Victor, but listen, Gokeres. Victor Gokeres and Alexander Isak, I know that they're just forming in terms of turning into very, mm -hmm. very solid world almost world-class, some would say world-class players, right? Uh, and I think it's shameful that we don't have Sweden on the world stage to see the, those two, those uh, two killing it in we Germany. Will. And we, we will. And I, I don't know what it's going to take. Well, it's going to take an expanded field in 2026 for Sweden to get there, and or Arugi it's going to take Jokeres and Isak. Oh, a good yeah, recovery, please. too. Our that, thoughts that, on that. that. Hurt my heart to and see Lucas that because Bedfall. that's... In Tottenham next oh season, gosh. let's see how he develops with that. But yes, we mentioned True. Chelsea. Chelsea this season, they're looking pretty good when Cole Palmer is the star of the show. Yes, they and are. Cole Palmer mm -hmm. is the third player in Premier League history, under 21, to register 30 goal involvements. He's my signing oh. of the season, ahead of a Declan mm. Rice. Cole Palmer. Wow. And Cole Palmer is... Picked for England ahead of James Madison that was on the bench against Liverpool, okay? Cole Palmer yeah. is the guy at Chelsea. And there's an acceptance yeah. that Cole Palmer is the maestro on the field. The team trusts the movements of Cole Palmer. And this structure of 4-2-3-1 was good football mm -hmm. today against West Ham. It was one of the best games I saw in terms of movement. Cucurella, coming internally, he was phenomenal in this free roll. So Pochettino... Yeah. He, I think yep. Pochettino knows he's a stepping stone manager. I know. I think he, he realizes he won't win the Premier League with this Chelsea team, but someone will with these fundamental structures and this movement and dynamics that are much better. Much better. Cole yeah, Palmer is that yeah. guy. Nico Jackson has improved. Connor Gallagher yep. has improved massively. A lot of positive signs in this last stretch of the season. Yeah. So I don't. Uh, I, I, let's see. I, I, <laughs> I I agree, but you're right. Twenty one goals, nine assists this season. Uh, Twenty six Premier League starts for Cole Palmer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm with you, and and Pochettino, in my opinion, only really gave him the stage. Uh, yep. That's about it. And then he got it. And then he got the hell out of the way, Alex. <laughs> that's what ended up happening. Um, but I do want to give Pochettino. I mean, calling him a stepping stone manager is pretty interesting. I, is? I do wonder what the comments feel about that. Uh, but in in this particular kind of setup 
Um, I know stats don't mean everything, mm -hmm. but if I were to tell you that Chelsea had a striker, a uh, young striker, uh, who in his first full season in the Premier League managed 13 goals and five assists mm -hmm. with a couple games left. All competition, uh, you'd 16 probably goals, tell me, six assists. Yeah, you you tell me like that's that's pretty decent, True. is it not? And he's a decent um, but striker, yes. but he's not and, at and 25 to is, 30 goals a season right now, but he could no, become one day. <laughs> It's That's... exactly if you can get someone that can actually develop him, develop <laughs> him well, he could be a monster. Nico Jackson deserves a little more love mm -hmm. uh, for the fact that he is still putting balls in the back of the net. True. Um, and yes, big chances missed. Uh, you you don't have to like you're preaching to the choir if you're going to try and tell me all the things that Nico Jackson did wrong this year. <laughs> but that is part and parcel of not buying finished products. You're buying True. and you're paying extra the premium for buying Potential. younger players. And we have to remember, it was only the second half of last season for Villarreal that Nico Jackson really started to kind of branch out and started to have good goal-scoring games. So, yeah, I know stats aren't everything, but Nico Jackson is a project I'm really, like, really, really interested in, not just for Chelsea, but also for Senegal. Oh, I um, like it, so and I agree with you, yeah. Benson. I agree with you strong heartly. And it's nice to see, it's nice to see too, Tiag Silva having this light stretch at mm -hmm. Chelsea and maybe going to end in a positive way, okay? Just being in a cup final, for me, is a phenomenal thing. This Chelsea's core structure, what we saw against West Ham, gives hope to the fans towards fighting towards top four next season. Definitely top yeah. six. Cole Palmer signing Maybe. of the season, Mudrik, Kukurela, Nico Jackson, Connor Gallagher, all improved in this late stretch this season. And yeah. that deserves yeah. recognition. Captain Connor Gallagher, great player. And, more than uh, five goals, more than five assists. And in duels, he's constantly involved, this man. I think Connor Gallagher cannot leave this Chelsea team, okay? I, I, I really yeah. like seeing him there because he gives inspiration towards academy players too. So that he, is an he, important player to stay. Connor, Connor Gallagher has been nothing but um, a, what's the word? A scapegoat, essentially, for the frustrations of all of Chelsea this True. particular season. Um, and yeah, I, I'd imagine he does some of that to himself. Um, but there's one thing Connor Gallagher doesn't stop doing, and that mm -hmm. is working hard for the team. He never sure. stops working for the team, and he is a team element uh, through and through, and he's Chelsea through and through. I think he's a guy you do have to continue to build around and continue to develop. Mm -hmm. Another young player. I mean, Noni Matawaka, you're seeing seeds <laughs> of uh, – we, we got to remember, this is a team that could still sneak into the, the Europa Conference League, sure. which I think would be a phenomenal, phenomenal thing for them considering ah. how much – how much crap we have given Chelsea this season. I mean, we were talking oh. about them uh, as relegation fodder earlier this season, and now they have uh, they've they've done some pretty dang good things. Cole they might Palmer's have killed David. It. They might well true, but they might have killed David Moyes's uh, West Ham career in mm. the process. Uh, because I don't know how you I don't know how you retain a guy that loses five zip. Um, <laughs> When you're already team? kicked out of Europe, right? That is or, the first no, time they? that they beat no. someone five zip since September Oof. 2019. David Moyes wow. is not looking too good. The way Paqueta played, no, no support. It wasn't good <laughs> at all. All. So Chelsea, really mm. positive what we're seeing. Let us know if you agree yeah. or disagree with this Chelsea thoughts for next season. Could be fighting top sure. four or conference league would be positive. And Liverpool, it was the last game. It was the last game yeah. of Jurgen Klopp. At Anfield in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. It's one of those are moments you, that uh, you, we all knew it would happen one day, but it's already happened now. And just you living tearing it. Up? I No, no, no. But definitely, <laughs> I'll say Jurgen yeah. Klopp is one of my favorite managers I've ever seen in the Premier League. No uh, doubt one uh, of the best. I'm with you. And he's the biggest mm -hmm. rival that Pep Guardiola had in the Premier League. That is undoubtable. Yeah. Uh, I know Arteta yeah. has arrived late stages. Uh, Ruben Amri could be arriving next season. <laughs> <laughs> but Jurgen Klopp, yeah. for the time being, he was a very good rival to Pep Guardiola. So it's oh, always sad to yeah. see the last, the last dance at Anfield. Dude, um, the, so yeah, the dude is a character too. I mean, he's just an absolute character True. who who just beams football, just loves everything football, um, and also loves to be a little bit of a troll from time to time. But he's, it, it's not so much character that that 
you can't understand obviously the genius that's underneath him, mm -hmm. uh, which is really really interesting. And and we don't have there's not enough in the Premier League in terms of that type of a, a mold uh, in the in the Premier mm -hmm. League. So I I wonder. I wonder who who are these next man. I mean, we have so Arne many Slots. wonderful managers Arne to Slots watch these days. Liverpool, but Arne right? Slot, yeah, coming uh, in, man, looking like that guy from a Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, but Klopp, like, it's this is what I gotta say to on Klopp having a positive yeah. statement instead of a a little bit a, a little bit of a sadder one. It's like Klopp mm -hmm. did a phenomenal job at Mainz. Klopp did a phenomenal job at Dortmund. Klopp yep. did a phenomenal job at Liverpool. And I'm sure wherever is next, Klopp will do a phenomenal job. We all know there's another story coming, and I hope it's Barca in 2025. Jurgen Klopp, you wow. know it. <laughs> to wow. go against Real Madrid. <laughs> wow. Yeah. If he goes to Bayern Munich, be... he'll be like, oh, come on. They've got him. <laughs> I guess they get all yep. the German managers, as it seems. So it's... And my last thing on, on Prem with Liverpool, it's Salah. Mm -hmm. Salah became the first player in Premier League history to have in three straight seasons 10 goals and 10 assists. Mo Salah is for me the best African player in the Premier League I've ever seen and Mo Salah is definitely a reference and top 10 in the Premier League in the history. Hall of Famer when he leaves one day. Hall of Famer yeah, in the Premier League. Yeah, score, <laughs> scores with his head too. I wasn't expecting that, um, that is over true. the weekend. That is true. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm with you there. All I... All I'm going to do is implore Liverpool to just build out your defense, please. Get it done. Just True. already have those targets ready. Hit them up early on this I particular summer. It could be losing and then Van get Dijk. it done. I think next season, yeah. Van Dijk, Klopp, Salah, they won't be a Liverpool next season. Arne Slot, he has to be thinking of yeah. center backs. And we will mention oh. in this podcast, episode 155, were the center backs to go to Liverpool, okay? <laughs> Just wanted to hint that. <laughs> uh, bring, bring, in, bring in Hanko, please. Ah, That's, there's, there's David bring, Hanko. Bring him with you. From Feyenoord. Well, why yeah, not? that'd be an interesting one. Why not? Very interesting player. He's a hero for his nation, yes. too. He is. Senezi, he is. playing pretty well for Burnmouth, wasn't the best. It was mm -hmm. a good first half against mm -hmm. Arsenal. Second half... Mm -hmm. That's why he was That's subbed a... off. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, it's much. it's an interesting yeah. one. And I know you wanted to mention something in the Premier League here at the end, Breton. Uh, wh what? Hip Spurs? hip switch. Hip switch. Oh my! They're gonna have oh a my new gosh, team. Right. Well, Spurs oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, two yeah, yeah, yeah. No, clean listen. sheets in the, the, the entirety these... of the Premier League. That's quite oh a sad gosh. one to end. But hip uh, switch. Uh, <laughs> all, all I have to say, yeah, all I have to say about Spurs. Uh, Big Ange has to figure out a way to oh, yeah. to play a different way. He needs mm -hmm. to have audibles. He needs to have. A he needs striker. to be able to morph when it's necessary. Because boom, I mean, you could figure they they've been figured out mm -hmm. right now, um, and they looked toothless today. I know they got two junk goals in the end, but <laughs> oof, that was brutal to watch. Liverpool just handed it to him. But anyway, True. yes, you're right. Ipswich Town is back. Ipswich Town is somebody I know when I was getting into football, and this is going to date me. Uh, this is going to make people realize, I guess, how ancient I am. Uh, but when I was getting into football, Ipswich was there. Ipswich mm -hmm. Town was a Premier League team. Um, but what makes this interesting? <laughs> yeah, oh gosh, no, way earlier than that. But what makes this really interesting is this is a back to back promotion. Back-to-back mm -hmm. -back promotion. So you're talking not even two years ago, uh, they were playing like, I can't even think of a League One team right now, like a Swindon Town or a Morecambe or whatever. Uh, yeah, Portsmouth, there you go. Um, <clears throat> but even better, what, what adds to this is that the back-to-back -back was architected <laughs> with trust in a new Wonder Kid manager that we yep. should all... And, and in fact, I believe Jose Mourinho is the one that gave him his first gig right as the u18 coach at manchester united mm. way back in the day he used to be in charge of anthony alanga he used to be in charge of uh oh i can't think of another one james garner i think was another one that was in that crew and he has gotten massive plaudits along the way and then it was ipswich town who had an american consortium buy them out um mm -hmm. that injected some money into them as a League One club and then yep. said, we want this then 35, 34-year-old to run the show. And they have given him everything that they've needed um, to get it done. And you're talking about 
a 22-year wait to get back to the Premier League. And they play in a way, one, they're not free spending. This is not Southampton. This is not Leicester City. This is not, um, what's the other team? Leeds United, right? Mm -hmm. They have spent a fraction of what those clubs have spent. And they have got back do, gotten back doing what? Playing really good football True. for those levels. So the biggest thing that Vincent Kompany found out for mm -hmm. Burnley this year is that you can't play the same dang way in the championship that you want to play in the Premier League, right? Yep. I, I'm going to be really, really interested in seeing how Kieran McKenna um, does with Ipswich next season. I think I have a new favorite uh, team to watch. Will, will you be uh, like Eddie Howe or off, Vincent so. Kompany? Uh, ooh. He's going to be more in the in the lane of of uh, Vincent Company, I think, with with a little more conservative tendencies um, mm, with not, it. So that's not too good of a sign, though. I prefer that no, it's, it, approach. <laughs> it's not, and and there is there is a worry. Back to back promotions, he's been, even I'd expect you'd say how. Yeah, <laughs> I I know, but uh, there's there's a interesting thing um, mm -hmm. as as part of their consistency. There's not a lot of wonder kids right mm. across the board. Uh, they did rely on one. Mm -hmm. uh, Chelsea Loney, Amari Hutchinson, 20 years old, uh, had 10 goals, five assists. Uh, 2024 is basically Amari Hutchinson helping them to the uh, to the promotion. So um, I'm just really uh, excited to yeah see some new blood there, especially after we've seen the carnage of this season so far. For I mean, everybody sure. that's getting promoted promoted last season is likely going back down but yeah you gotta love it because Enzo Maresca for Leicester City mm -hmm. Kieran McKenna for Ipswich Town I mean let's they're not quite wonder kid managers but like they're pretty much wonder kid managers oh. these are two to watch mm -hmm. um new ideas I'm all here for new ideas and hey maybe we've got a new like clop in the making somewhere <laughs> I have no clue uh but watch out for Ipswich Town especially uh uh if you're an Ed Sheeran fan because yeah. apparently he's a very large Ipswich Town fan. Well, I hope he's on tour because he celebrated that in Miami. If and he's really a fan, why mm. was he not in the stadium? But that's a whole other Very conversation. True. But Very let us true. know what are you thinking here with the Premier League. And you hinted to <laughs> Leicester won the championship and European yeah. League winners. We have conclusions now. We have La Liga, Real Madrid have won. Serie A, Inter. Bundesliga, Bar Leverkusen, Liga, PSG. Eredivis, <laughs> PSV are champions now with Peter Bosch. Portuguese League, all hints for Sporting to win it. And now the Premier League seems to be the one with the biggest doubt. Is it Arsenal yeah. or Man City? And I believe it will be Man City four in a row. But we have to talk about La Liga. Real Madrid oh, yeah. winning the way they did. Xavi, mm. well, ending a trophyless season. It's not the best way to end things, especially when you say you're going to go and then you stay. But one thing's for sure. The trust in La Masia makes Xavi staying the right decision. But Real Madrid, I agree. Real Madrid mm -hmm. 103 titles. Every mm -hmm. Barca fan, it's their nightmare happening in the next three years. Mbappe is going to Real Madrid. They seem to be the favorites towards winning the Champions League every single season with this team. And the culture is all about winning with this Galactico score. Real Madrid with this yeah. young core. Vini has 11 trophies. Valverde already has 11. Militão, 10. Camavinga, 8. Rodrigo, 10. Chouameni, 5 trophies. He just arrived to replace Casemiro. And now with Jude <laughs> Bellingham with 2 trophies too. This is the start yeah. of a new winning culture. Don't be surprised if they repeat again in the Champions League in the next 5 to 10 years. That is a plausible uh, statement. Mad. And, you know, there there's a lot to unpack here. They did it with an early injury crisis, yes. too. They did it even when when they promised Luka Modric a whole lot of time and they weren't <laughs> able to give it to him. True. They, they, they it, Carlo Ancelotti mm -hmm. had to make really tough decisions. Um, and he actually also has gotten a lot, I, I got to say, I, I know nepotism is a real talk about things, but his son David. is really starting to shine through. Uh, him and Maury, uh, the two assistant coaches, are really starting to shine through um, mm -hmm. for this Real Madrid team and another wonder kid manager potentially in the making <laughs> in the future. But before we he get to that point, I, I have to bring this up. Rob, uh, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and but but before we get to uh, mm -hmm. the like what makes how we got to this point, right? Because mm -hmm. the Barca thing goes a little bit deeper and that game was spectacular yes. football to watch my gosh but lever 
Leverkusen, right, mm -hmm. is unbeaten this season. <laughs> Leverkusen in the Bundesliga have played mm, 32 league games now, and they have conceded 24 goals. Oof. And I just mentioned at the beginning of this that Real Madrid, right, mm -hmm. have uh, had a very big defensive crisis to start the year. Thibaut mm -hmm. Courtois, gone. Uh, uh, Eder Militao, thankfully he's back, was gone earlier this season. They mm -hmm. had to put Shuamani back there, essentially against his will, although, True. of course, he's grown into that role and been phenomenal. Yes. Um, and that's mm -hmm. not the only thing, but they have managed in La Liga this season to be the best defense, bar none. 22 True. goals conceded in 34 league games, so played two more games mm -hmm. than Bayer Leverkusen has. <laughs> um, and all these games were played essentially with a hodgepodge defense, right? Um, and I think that and, deserves mm -hmm. a lot of credit because it's not just the attack. Um, I think this, believe it or not, was one with defense. It I was. Agree. They don't I have agree. an out-and-out -out striker. It was one with defense, and it's impressive. And you say it was Real Madrid won their season with defense, and it was the first league title of Antonio Rudiger's career. That's mad. Wow. <laughs> That's mad. Wow. We all expect him to have won a league title already. He's not like Kingsley Common, but I think his heritage one day <laughs> will be perceived highly higher than Kingsley Common because Rudiger is wow. one of the best center backs in the world. And you said it, Breton. Real Madrid started the season without a starting goalkeeper, Thibaut Courtois. Right. Real Madrid has started the season without two starting center backs, Alabaye and Militao, and without a yep. starting striker, too. Okay, so this is one of the best seasons I've seen in ever of Don Carlo Ancelotti that only has one loss in La Liga. A manager that is the first manager to win the first five, uh, the f top five European leagues um, and the first manager to win four UCL titles. Don Carlo uh, Ancelotti, one of the best ever. Yeah. One, is, one of his best seasons is now this one. It's you cannot yeah. vote against this one. And Xavi <laughs> and Girona deserves a shout because we're mentioning oh, La Liga. Of course. Girona beats Ooh. Barca 4-2 at home. And they did a way too. Don't forget that. They historically yeah. it's their first time now in the Champions League because of this season. And Artem Dovbik, 20 goals, six assists, record signing for a reason. And he's proven to be one of the most attractive signings, uh, attractive strikers yeah. to sign in next summer. Shrewd. So let's wait and yeah. see if that will happen, okay? <laughs> but but uh, here's the issue that I have with that game. Um, mm. If there's anything that Barcelona should be embarrassed about this particular season, it's the fact that Girona had their number both home and away. True. Um, I know I know. previous to this, this, is, this has never been a rivalry. Well, guess what? It's a rivalry now. Mm. It's a rivalry. They're an hour away from each other. They're both no, Catalonian Barca, clubs. Uh, Barca, yeah, you know? still, Breton. Come on. Well, of <laughs> oh, I mean, of course. Hey, you can have two rivalries. I'm just saying, two times. I mean, it's kind of like Sassuolo having Inter's, um, Inter's number this season in Serie A when Inter's top of the table and Sassuolo's fighting for Serie A life. Good save Which is there. just crazy to Good think. But, but, Girona, <laughs> but Girona is just... Um, they deserve so much uh, more talk and I know we gave it to them earlier this season but for them to actually come back because they were looking mm -hmm. a little iffy heading into the the you know the final stretch True. of this La Liga, Liga season and I think Barca had all the momentum heading into this game and, and mm -hmm. in fact it felt that way in the first 20 minutes uh, but then yeah Porto that goal that he scored unbelievable <laughs> um Miguel Gutierrez uh, had an own goal and then came back and scored or no a penalty conceded True. and then came hey, back Miguel and scored Gutierrez. a goal for himself they oh, have true. some young players that could wind up staying with this squad the issue true. is is they're heading into their first Champions League season ever and i i couldn't tell you what that roster is going to look like next season. I, I, I think it could be what better, like. maybe. I think Leverkusen will keep a lot of their stars. But with Girona, yeah. I don't think Dovbik will stay. I don't think Miguel Gutierrez will stay. What Sabi's about Michel? already been conformed to go to Man City. Michel could True. stay. I think Michel could stay, yes. And he's yeah. a vital piece towards guaranteeing maybe another Champions League run if everything goes right. But they'll have investment mm -hmm. because Girona is City group and last on Real because we have other leagues but Real Madrid this is what I gotta respect Florentino Perez has now surpassed 
uh, Santiago Bernabéu is the president with the most titles in Real Madrid history. Wow. And Florentino Pérez, the focus of him uh, with this generation, Real Madrid's golden generation now with Vini, Jude Bellingham, Valverde, Rodrigo, they've always yep. been coached by the top, the best managers available. Zidane. Now, Carlo Ancelotti. And next will be Xabi Alonso. There's a care in developing these players. Vini is the top goal scorer in El Clasico, Brazilian goal scorer in El Clasico, with so many stars have passed beforehand. There's a chance of right. having Ballon d'Or winners only at Real Madrid in the next five to ten years. Like, there's a chance. Not saying it's going to yep. happen. So... They need to be treated the right way. And Florentino Perez always has the main concern towards the manager at the top. And he's always had it right. So the yeah. fact that Casemiro, yeah. Casemiro, Kroos, Modric, that happened with Zidane. Then we have a Benzema having a phenomenal season with Carlo. Mm. So it's so many right decisions that you got to yeah. respect who's at the top. So And Modric yeah. became the oldest player ever. To have a La Liga game, 38 years old. Oh, look so at that! So most decorated Real Madrid player next to Nacho. Mm. So they go hand in hand. So let's see if Modric will extend. But other leagues, PSV. Mm. We said Real Madrid mm -hmm. won La Liga with only one loss. Guess who did that too? PSV. Yeah. They won Eredivisie with only one loss. Peter Bosch. You got to remember this name. Luke De Jong playing phenomenal football. Joey Veerman, Johan Bakayoko, even Anoa Lang yep. having really good moments this season. So kudos I'm to PSV Eindhoven. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, Malik it's Tillman. a for, former. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we got to talk. Mal Malik Tillman had nine goals, 11 assists this season. Oof. Under the radar. Under, Under the, radar. the radar. I think he only had he only had like maybe 14 or 15 starts for them because he wasn't there. Caught uh, by many the good starters. season. Um, ooh, ooh. Well, it depends on the ooh. health of our players right now. We just lost Serginho Dest. Like um, no, but I, he's definitely going to get his chances. He will definitely oh, do. Do Malik I think he Tillman starts right away? Probably Girena? not. That's an interesting. But Malik Tillman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm just sad for Serginho Dest is out for a while. Mm, um, nine to twelve team, months. Too. Malik Tillman though, nine goals, eleven assists in the air divisi. Ricardo Pepe, seven goals. I think he wants more playing time, so we'll see what happens there. <laughs> but the the biggest thing is Ernie Stewart. Um, I don't know if you know the name from U.S. history, but U.S. men's national team winger uh, played a part in the the massive USA versus Colombia upset mm. in the 1994 World Cup. Also was the Philadelphia Union technical director. He was also the U.S. soccer technical director. And now he is the guy that pieced this Eredivisie squad together. Talk. Hence why we have so many Americans likely on that squad. Uh, mm. But listen, this is their first title, 25th overall, first title since 2017, 2018. Um, I, I, I didn't know it was that long. I mean, <laughs> I, I know it's not that long, but there are only so many like major clubs in the year Eredivisie. True. The only reason that this was not clinched sooner, and I, I hate to bring it back to Arne Slot, <laughs> but the only reason it was not clinched sooner with the, the ridiculously historic type of season that PSV Eindhoven had mm -hmm. is because Feyenoord were so dang good this season True. too after winning last season. So um, those two teams, I mean... Uh, we'll see if PSV can do it all over again. But, mm. <laughs> but it's yeah, true. where's Ajax? It's, it's exactly. not looking too good. And 107 no. goals scored by PSV. These are quite mm. remarkable numbers. Two managers, Arnold Slot and Peter Bosch, that we believe will be coaching top teams Real yeah. soon. Arne Slot, we already know, he is going to Liverpool. And yes, Portuguese yeah. league. I, I want to mention, in the, in the mm. previous podcast, we haven't focused too much on the Portuguese league. And I wanted to give a special moment to Sporting. Sporting are going to win the league second time in four years. Ruben Amorim is the main reason why. And Ruben, it's an historic season that will always be remembered for Sporting fans. They're 100% sure. they're victorious at home, Sporting. 16 games, 16 wins. Ruben Emery, by winning the league, will become the youngest manager ever to win two league titles in Portuguese league history. Victor Guilherme has 56 goal involvements. But Gonzalo Inácio, Martin Huilman, all players that are improving massively with Ruben Amorim guiding them. So it's a consequence of good decisions on and off the pitch. Sporting wins the league because of the development of players and smart business in the transfer window. This season, Breton, Sporting and Ruben Amorim, development, Trincão, 
Paulinho, Eduardo Quaresma, Franco Israel, Dário Isugo, a good loan, uh, Matheus Fernandes, a positive loan, Fatau, a positive loan, Ana Daniel yeah. Bragança, a Morita, so many players that we look at them, and the fingerprint of Ruben Amorim is massively present. This is a top yeah. manager that I'm putting all my chips on him becoming the next great Portuguese manager, Ruben Amorim. He's the man who yeah. convinces Guilherme to come. He's the guy. Uh, well, and um, <laughs> you were there, Bretson. Bretson witnessed know. the first match of Vitor Guilherme in the league. Two goals yep. scored. Bretson was there, and he's mm -hmm. one of the best signings ever, ever in Portuguese league football. Bretson, a man from <laughs> Philly, can say he witnessed history. <laughs> uh, it's from true. And the one. last time, <laughs> the last time I was there before that. I got to see Enzo Fernandez and Antonio Silva. <laughs> they true. were debuts, but to see them before they, well, Antonio Silva has not made a move, but to see Enzo yeah. before he left for Chelsea, um, that was, that was pretty dang awesome too. <laughs> it only makes me wonder what I'm going to be doing, uh, you know, a couple months from now when I'm there for the Euros. Ah, uh, but you, hey, you'll be watching, yeah. uh, watching Euro 2024 <laughs> in big TVs. That'll be, <laughs> I love it. I love Let's it. Now remember, happen. I got, I got kids. Those kids can't drink beer. No, uh, no, no, but no. I, I'm no, I'm so looking forward to that, man. I, I just to watch a Portugal game in Portugal. <laughs> right i know not in person but just to watch it with the, the i would i can't wait for it i think cannot there's going to be it. loads so, of people like from germany from other points of europe that they want to watch the euros in the sun so they're going to watch it in yeah. portugal with good Smart good prices people. of beer it's less let's see what's well, going to happen but that's going to be really I will, fun really fun. i will tell you right now mm -hmm. there are more people and this is like a good thing for portugal it's also a bad thing because mm. yeah uh, there are more people talking about Portugal over here in the States as a destination, as a place that they want to go, like, or have gone or already booked tickets. Um, so so I, I know there's a Ruben. push and pull to tourists. That's because but of it's Gio because, yeah. <laughs> No, it's definitely. I think it's, yeah, it's Ruben Amarim for sure. Oh, no, no, but, oh. but, but before, forward, before we move forward, I know you have said it in past um, podcasts, mm. but I do have to ask you, you already – have a sporting manager lined mm -hmm. up for after Ruben Amarim leaves, correct? Uh, actually, I don't really know. <laughs> no? <laughs> for ah, me, okay. I'll, I'll say this as a prediction. I think okay. the best manager in the Portuguese league next season, or one of the best managers in the Portuguese league next season, mm -hmm. surprising will be the Braga manager, Daniel Souza. Mm. That's gone from okay. Maroca to Braga, and he'll be next season at Braga. Watch out for yeah. Braga next season. They'll be pushing for the top three. I'll, a lot harder than this season. That They have good players. Simon Banza, uh, Ricardo Horta staying. They're a good team, sure. but <laughs> yeah. this sporting team, like I've never seen sporting fans as happy as they are. And they're happy because oh, they've got one of the greatest managers they've ever seen with Ruben Amorim and one of the greatest signings they've ever seen in the Portuguese league with Vitor Guilherme. It's historic mm. what he has done. The celebration has crossed the world. We all know what it means. It means Vitor Guilherme has scored a goal. He will only leave for the 100 million. And I only think I don't think Ruben Amorim would leave Sporting to go to West Ham. Only a oh. top, top, top team in Europe will convince Ruben to leave such a good position that he has with Sporting. He would be the favorite next season with the right signings and with Gio Keres staying to win the league three times in five years. So it has to be a worthy project. Gosal Inácio, Bot, Huilmand, yeah. all players, there mm -hmm. are references in the Sporting team with Ruben guiding them. And don't forget, Bretton, wow. Nun Mendes, mm -hmm. Pedro Porro, Palinha, mm -hmm. Mateus Nunes mm -hmm. were all coached by Ruben Amorim. So true. that's the common Very factor. Very true. Coached yeah. by Ruben Amorim. <laughs> so there yeah, I wanted to give this word, this uh, this moment, um, because the sport, the Portuguese league is now with three great teams with Sporting Porto and Benfica all fighting towards winning the league. And Porto, André Villas Boas, mm -hmm. new president, Pinta Costa. Yep. Phenomenal president, the most decorated president, president ever in football, I think. 42 years yeah. in charge. And now it's Village Bush that that will be an interesting one. And yes, new, Leicester. New. Did we say Leicester won yeah. the championship? <laughs> we did. And a lot of that was because of Jamie Fatawu. And, 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 Fatawu. and Jamie Vardy. <laughs> uh, but Fatawu, no, I mean, Fatawu, I mean, he has been unmarkable. 
for Leicester City uh, mm-hmm. late this season, as some like Pat Sandaka has been in and out of the side. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Fatawu, and I think it's amazing already that Sporting has agreed to sell him for what they got million. seventeen million or so. I'll, yeah, I'll and that. I think some of the well, that's one of the hardest things to do um, when you got somebody that does as well. You, you, you it's kind of like the Jaden Sancho issue. It's, <laughs> you got to be happy that his value has risen to a point where you can now let him go, exactly. um, and you make a little money off of it, and you can spend that money wisely uh, to mm-hmm. find the next Victor Gio- <laughs> Um the left. Because all good things have to come to an end. And uh, yeah, Gioquieres, yeah. Amarim, I mean, let's there's see. there's change, see, change of foot. Let's see, we'll let's see. see. Right. It's, it's a great talk, too, it's true. <laughs> but it let is. us know, it European is. leagues, were you surprised? Were you not? Do you want us to make a team of the season of each of the leagues? Ooh. Let us know down below in the comment section and like this video for more videos just like this. So now... Sure. Ballon d'Or Golden Boy Edition, and to make it interesting, oh it's a start bench cell. You'll be listening to yeah. these start bench cells too, so let us know before we say our answers down below in the comment section your answers and thoughts, okay? And like this yep. video for more ideas just like this. So to start, mm-hmm. Bretton, <laughs> mm-hmm. Golden Boy since we're FC Wonder Kid and Midfielder Edition. Okay. All three mm-hmm. of the players are contenders to win the Golden Boy. What inside yep. Emery? João Neves mm-hmm. and Kobe Maino start bench cell. Man United fans, I know what they're gonna answer. <laughs> I, I I do too, but I'm I'm still I'm sticking with my guns on this one, and I'm mm. notoriously a waffler here. Um, I'm going to start Warren Zaire Emery. I'm going mm-hmm. to bench João Neves, and I'm going to sell Kobe Maino. Uh, you say Mainu. Kobe Mainu? Mainu. I don't know how to say his last name, but I am selling him. And I know that that hurts uh, per se, uh, but these others, Zaire Emery, Jaunevs, mm-hmm. have been doing it for longer. I know mm-hmm. Kobe Mainu has been doing it in the youth academy previous yep. to this. He has done nothing but impress, but just based on sheer time um, and the fact that all three of them... Mm-hmm have literally limitless potential. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can't put a ceiling on any of them. So I <laughs> only can take the here and now right now. And uh, selling my new for me makes the most sense. Uh, but I think out of them, copy my new is going, he has just as much potential as Zaire Emery, as Zhao Neves. Mm-hmm. I just want to see more. That's it's, all. And all three of them, we believe, are going to Euro 2024. What in Zaire Emery, Kobe yeah. Maino, and Joe Nevsh, and will be Plain important huge. players and will play minutes in these comp- in this exactly. competition. So, golden mm-hmm. boy they are. I start what in Zaire Emery. I start Warren Zaire Emery because PSG looks so good with a midfield with Zaire Emery, Vitinha, and Xavi Simmons Vitinha. in the future. Oh, my mm-hmm. days. I bench Ronevs because Ronevs replaced Enzo Fernandez that was worth $120 million, And I will unfortunately sell Kobe Maino because he's going wow. against two superstars with Ronevs and Warren Zaire yeah. Emery. And a phenomenal yeah. other midfielder in my view, too. So that was a hard one. <laughs> a little bit easier, I believe, this next one, Bretson, will be okay. a start bench sell between Rodri of Man City, Aurelian mm-hmm. Chouameni from Real Madrid, and Declan Rice from Arsenal. A start bench sell with these three phenomenal defensive midfielders. <laughs> ah, I mean, you're almost making it easy with the Premier League tax here. Um, ah. the, the overvaluing <laughs> in the Premier League. No, I, I, Aurelian Schumani is, I think, the least, has has hit his ceiling the least out of the three of them, mm. right? So I think he's got e- even more of a legendary mode uh, to be reached. I mm-hmm. think he's getting there, and I think he will be there. He's shown multiple times this season that he can be that guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't Holland. think... And I don't think any of them. I think they all pale in comparison to Rodri. So I'm I'm definitely starting Rodri. Mm-hmm. I am going to bench Shuamani, and I'm going to sell Declan Rice. Um, and that is Tough weird decisions. for me to say because Tough decisions because I got made, Declan. But I yeah, agree, Brett. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Damn. So it wasn't that hard. Look at us. <laughs> what do you Look mean? Look at us. We're like, really, come on. We're really good at this. But you are many. No, I know. Like, Declan yeah. Rice is, for me, the mm -hmm. second best defensive mid in the Premier League, Kodri being the first. I agree. But you are many. Mm -hmm. The versatility he's shown this season, playing center back too, Chuameni will remind everyone in Euro 2024 why he's one of the best defensive mids in the world. So I'll start Khadri, yep. bench Chuameni, and sell Declan Rice. I'm sorry, Arsenal fans. They're just going to go on top, oh, of listen, us. <laughs> top of us. Declan, Declan can do us all a favor and outshine both of those guys in the upcoming Euros. You know, it does, could happen. Do that and he has the better squad. It could happen. Well, he then does. France, well, no. Then France, no. Yeah. It's, it's leveled it's with France. <laughs> but yeah. mentioning level we'll with France, so two other players. Mm -hmm. This is a mega one. Guys, please oh, comment God. down below. We're going to do this one, okay? <laughs> I'm like already like prepping because it's just so yeah. just so heavy, these names. So start <laughs> bench cell with Kylian Mbappe, Erling mm -hmm. Haaland, and Harry Kane. Mm -hmm. A start bench cell between three players. That are Ballon d'Or contenders. Uh, listen, I know he just scored a poker, but <laughs> consistency is key for me, man. And it's weird to say a guy with as many goals as Erling Holland has to his name mm -hmm. uh, is inconsistent. But you, you know what I'm talking about when I we you, say I that. So I'm I'm buying Kylian Mbappe. Or buying. Oh, my gosh. I'm starting Kylian Mbappe. Mm -hmm. I am benching Harry Kane. I am selling Erling Holland. Uh, and that's um, the thing, and, right? and actually, that, like, Kane... that was the easiest one for me. That was the easiest one out of the three that you've given me so far. For me. I agree with you with starting Kylian Mbappe, no doubt. The best footballer in the world right now. It's the Kane and Haaland that I'm, that I'm having conflicting thoughts. For the talent that he is, I'll, I'll bench Haaland it... and I'll sell Harry Kane. Wow. I know English fans it's... are now going to be on top of me with this one. Yeah, that's, and I that's know a lot of... Just counting this season... Kane has had a better season than Erling Haaland. But the talent that Haaland has, the last season I saw from Erling Haaland just makes me think 100%. this third season is going to go 100% yeah. bold. And maybe it's he'll true. even break their 36 goals, okay, with full fold and playing like this. Wow, it's going to be very bold. So, yeah, it's, but, it's but one of for those. Me, this is one of those. Yeah, but it, it, it is one opinions. of those. But you either, start, you either start Erling Haaland or you sell him. I think Harry Kane's the only one that's probably going to um, be like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be on the bench for a little while. That's <laughs> no, fine. Mbappe and then I'll get out there. Him. I'll yeah. never sell him. Uh, <laughs> but but er, like Erling Haaland, I just think he either starts or he doesn't play. Right. And Harry Kane is a guy that is so involved in the game. Um, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm trying to over justify this, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sticking with my gut here. Uh, Erling Haaland's got to go somewhere else if he can't start in my team. Like it. Go. I like it, Bretson. <laughs> and now going back to Wonder Kids, because that's our podcast. And I hope your yes. people are commenting down below because this is not easy, okay? And if you're saying it's easy, it's because you're not giving opinions down below in the comment section. It's between yeah, three do. players that are exploding this season. Exploding, Bretson. And Ballon d'Or contenders, right. too. It's a start bench sell between a Phil Foden, a Jude mm -hmm. Bellingham, and a Florian Wirtz. Oh, this is You're the Ogosh start bench cell, Breton. I want to yeah. know how big you rank Florian Wirtz. I see so many oh people saying their gosh. answers. I want yours, Breton. I, I know. I, I need uh, it. <laughs> this is this is very. Uh, this one is the hardest. This because, is. Um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna stick with it. Mm. I'm still starting Jude Bellingham. Okay. Uh, I, I, we can't. You cannot discount what this this man has done in his first season in La Liga. Uh, here, mm -hmm. I'm already over justifying. Okay, but I'm starting Jude Bellingham. Um, I'm I'm benching Phil Foden and I'm selling Florian Wirtz. No! Florian Wirtz injury history worries me. Uh, uh, two. Um, it's it's one amazing, not one amazing season, but one world class season. Let's be honest, right? As much as I think he can take it to another level, especially under Xabi Alonso, um, I, I'm just I'm gonna go with the guy that oh. is somehow still making his name at Manchester City under one of the best managers ever. Look, Pep I'm overreacting. Uh, like, so yeah. So it's like okay, yeah. any one of the three that you start, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's one of those with Beards Foden and Jude Bellingham. All three are all yeah. special, and all three have shown glimpses of world-class moments this season. And they're all under 23. Uh, Beards, uh, yeah. Beards being... No, Phil Foden being the oldest, and Jude Bellingham being the youngest. So, yeah. I will start <laughs> Jude Bellingham, because I think yeah. Jude Bellingham is the one closest towards winning a Ballon d'Or of the three. 
I will bench Florian Wirtz, the best player in the wow. Bundesliga. And I okay. will sell Phil Foden, okay? Phil Foden <laughs> is phenomenal. Phil Foden is better than Saka for me. But Wirtz is undefeated. And Wirtz, if yeah. he wasn't in this Bayer Leverkusen team with Xabi Alonso, they wouldn't have won the league. And they for sure wouldn't have been undefeated. He is the maestro. He's that guy. More than 30 goal involvements this season at hey, Leverkusen. Yeah. A team that was 17th when Xabi Alonso started. So, Dude, and his, 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 his story is just epic. I mean, come Boyhood on, club. coming back from an ACL, but yeah, coming back from an ACL injury and doing Cologne what he's doing this season. Um, at yeah, 16, it's to, he took the risk well, well, to go to Leverkusen yeah. and it paid off. Uh, it really did. It really did. But I'll, I'll tell you what, what was mm. even more impressive was Bayer Leverkusen over this weekend. Um, I told you, I, I thought that they would lose at some point after <laughs> they've already won the Bundesliga. They would just kind of throw no, it away. No. Nah, let's put a five spot right? up on... Eintracht Frankfurt mm. and uh, Adam Hlozek, still <laughs> only 21 years old, hits for a hat trick of assists. I mean, True. come on. Like, I, I love – that's the type of stuff that you look at and you go, maybe Bayer Leverkusen mm. could become a long-time, decent, uh, perennial winner of well, the Bundesliga. As long maybe. as Xabi Alonso is there, they're always going to be contenders to win the Bundesliga. 48 matches on oh, right now. Fring Pong, 14 goals, 11 Shh. assists. One of the best right wing backs in the world, if not the best last this season, Jeremy Fringpong. ACL injuries just no, or injuries just like Florian Wirtz too. A story mm -hmm. that goes hand in hand between Wirtz and Fringpong. But don't think you yeah. get rid of me with these start bench cells, Bretton. Okay, that was oh, the gosh. difficult one of Wonder Kids, but now an easier one in my <laughs> view, but could be difficult for the for our English listeners. It's a start right. bench cell of goal of Wonder Kids with Jamal Musiala. Cole Palmer, mm -hmm. and Xavi Simmons. Oh. A start bench cell. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Because Why I'm you curious doing this to, to know, Bretson. I'm curious Listen, to know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, I, I'm i actually comfortable with this one, too. Ah. Jamal Musiala, game, massive game changer. Um, he built League the winner. team around him. <laughs> Champions League, yeah. <laughs> um, I think he's going to be absolutely huge. Him and Florian Wirtz for Germany this summer. Mm -hmm. I, I'm starting him because he is just a game changer mm -hmm. um and has been multiple times for them mm -hmm. uh whereas cole palmer is a game changer this particular season uh there is no doubt that he has been beyond impressive for a pretty well a, a getting better team um so i will i will start yeah i will mm -hmm. uh start jamal musiala i will bench cold palmer <laughs> um, just for his penalty ability, gets him, nicks him right above Xavi Simmons. I will sell Xavi Simmons, although he's had a wonderful season. Uh, getting UCL ball again for mm -hmm. RB Leipzig, even though RB really Leipzig hasn't the had th the best. Yeah, and he had no problem adjusting. Everyone was like, ah, oh, he can't do it from the ear to the Z to the <laughs> Bundesliga. Yeah, well, he did it, and he'll do it again in Ligue 1. In fact, it'll probably be easier for him Agreed. if he decides to go. He might stay on loan. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I'm, pre I'm pretty confident in that. Musiala, Palmer, and then sell Xavi Simmons. I agree with you. I'll start Jamal yes. Musiala, uh, best player in the World Cup for Germany at such a young age, Champions League winner. Cole Palmer, I'll yep. bench him and I will sell Xavi Simmons that I'm very excited to see him as the main star in a PSG it team without Kylian Mbappé. Ha ha ha, Vitinha. Yeah. Come on, what in Zaire Emery and Xavi Simmons? The stars will be in the midfield in this PSG team. And Gonçalo Ramos. Bora lá. And Barcola is looking better here at the end stretch of the season. And the last one. Is. And if you're listening until now with these start bench cells and having a bit of fun, come on, go bold mm -hmm. too and say your thoughts down below in the comments. Last one is another one, which is Wonder Kids. And I want to alert to the people how good of a Wonder Kid I believe the center back is. It's start bench mm. cell with Antonio Silva, Lenny Oro, mm -hmm. and Jared Barthwaite. Mm -hmm. Start bench cell with oh. three, these three center backs that all could play for Premier League top teams next season. Yeah, I, I'm also remembering Branthwaite in a PSV jersey for mm -hmm. a hot moment, having his a little bit of a breakout there. Mm -hmm. Um, you said Lenny Oro is in there too, Lenny right? Oro, for some yeah. reason, I just blanked out. Okay. <laughs> Lenny Oro, yeah. Antonio Silva, okay. <laughs> and Brathwaite, yeah. And uh, okay, well, I guess the Portuguese players can can uh, ju er, 
players, listeners can uh, jump on me for this one. But I, I think it's high time Benfica does sell Antonio Silva. Um, but I'm going to start Lenny Oro. I'm mm. going to bench Jared Branthwaite. Ah, um, and I'm going on. to sell uh, Antonio Silva. Ah. And I think Branthwaite is... Um, He's going to be better. Silva than Branthwaite. He is going to be better. Uh, I think Branthwaite is going to be better. Ah, come I think on. Brant, I, think Brant, I think Branthwaite, when all is said and done, mm. um, could be one of the better center backs uh, that, that England League. has seen. Oh! Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, could be could, could be one of the better center backs if he's developed properly. But he has to take the next right, st- the the best Ooh, here's next the step for him. He's like the Wayne and, Rooney of center backs, uh, uh, leaving Everton. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately, he's a little older uh, than Wayne Rooney when Wayne Rooney left Everton. And and, and let's mm-hmm. be honest, Wayne Rooney also he he needs to leave man managerial decisions uh, to other people because my goodness he touched Birmingham City and Tom Brady's not happy anyway long story short (laughs) Jared Jared Branthwaite I mean just watching him watching him grow into his own I think he's a little bit of a late late bloomer when you're Mm -hmm. comparing him obviously to Lenny Yoro right Mm now uh but but I really do think he's he's a quick learner um I think believe it or not we're uh, playing for Everton especially in such a challenging season Mm -hmm. in the Premier League um is, is going to only cut him for future years. I really do believe that England has a, a phenomenal future world-class center back in Jared Branthwaite. I do. With uh, points but deducted even then, to Everton, and they keep on yeah. delivering with Sean Dyche. Branthwaite is one of the best players it, in this team. It's true. It's true. But Lenny Yoro is also Lenny Yoro. So ah. I'm, I'm, I'm not that deluded <laughs> here. But Lenny Yoro is great. I have watched a lot of Jared Branthwaite, so there might be mm-hmm. a little bias in my talk here, I've uh, but Lenny Oro is, is so, so special. There is, yeah. there might be a know, bit of bias too. <laughs> Included. Yeah, well, he's great. He's great. I, I, no joke. I think I've seen I more just, than 20 times Antonio Silva play. Ooh, so it's well, like, this is one of those things like with Antonio, this year is going to be what makes him take that next step because uh, yeah, uh, there's no doubt he's made, he's made Euros. more kind of little you mistakes. In the Euros, Bretton, right? Not yeah. in because well, yeah, the club true. level, second yeah. place. It wasn't the best of seasons yeah. of Roger Schmidt and Benfica. But I agree with you. No, Start not. Lenny Yoro, yeah. the best center back in Liga this season. It might be bold for some, but facts for other people. Bench Antonio Silva and sell Jareth Brathwaite. And I do believe will be okay. a great English center back, but not as good as Antonio Silva for Portugal. You know what's Fair up. Enough. I didn't even mention Usman Ediomande because I wanted you English fans to get triggered and comment down below your thoughts, okay? Disagree, <laughs> agree, let us know your thoughts and like this video uh... for more Start Bench Cell videos. But one thing, Brett said, we haven't talked since then. Messi is officially arrived. No, Messi is the best player in the MLS <laughs> since day one. No surprise for everyone. And now he's the first player ever in MLS history to have five assists and all in the second half. That was the boldest <sighs> second half ever in MLS history. What we witnessed. Oh my gosh. Boldest. There was there was early talk that it was it was New York. New York Red Bulls, they'd, they'd be able to figure it out. They'd be able to <laughs> keep them corralled long enough. Frustrate Messi. Frustrate Suarez. No. Yeah, that didn't happen. Frustrate the first 45 themselves. minutes it happened. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> after that, the floodgates opened. One goal, five assists. Uh, first player in MLS history to register five mm-hmm. assists in one game. First player to register, I think, six goal involvements in one game. And he's also set records uh, with 10 goals, nine assists. <laughs> in seven starts um leo messi i've been very straightforward about this um when inter miami plays when inter miami is healthy there's no doubt they're the best team in the league and if they add on hell di maria god help us (laughs) god help us all but but when it but this is a long season because it's for you know mls it's all about money come on you got the league's cup you got all this stuff that's just thrown in there and it's game after game after game and these are not 22 year old players Bretton, any longer right? let me ask you this but, though but let me tell you yes. this bro let me ask you Lionel mm-hmm. messi wins copa america and he wins the and he becomes the player of the tournament Lionel messi wins mls and he becomes the player of the year of the mls does messi yeah. finish top 10 in the ballon d'or Oh, top 10? Uh, top 10, I think I would personally not vote him top 10 just mm-hmm. for that. 
Uh, well, uh, hold on. For winning the Copa America? Sir, and player of the mm. tournament. So Messi wins Copa and player America, of the tur- player of the it, tournament. Um, MLS and player and player of the league in the MLS. Does he finish top 10 in the Ballon d'Or, Messi? Okay, well, there's no doubt that he would. There's mm-hmm. no doubt that he would. I'm not saying that I would agree with that decision, but there is no doubt that he would. And I think a lot of that just comes on the fact that Copa America and the um I just hope the, he doesn't finish Golden Ball ahead of player. Foden and Wirtz in the Ballon d'Or talk. Yeah, well, That's what I hope. Yeah, well, they got to do it at the Euros, too. <laughs> it's true. They got to do it at the Euros, it's too. True, so, but, yeah, oh. I'm with you. But, but no, I, he 100% would finish top 10 based on that. Uh, do I fully agree with that? I'd have to think about that more. But I, I'd actually lean towards no. I wouldn't agree with him being necessarily top But it's quite mad, 10. though, Bretson. It, like, in the MLS, Inter Miami with yeah. Lionel Messi, 25 games, 23 mm. goals, 16 assists. These are mad numbers. Jeez. And if there's a player finishing top 10 in the Ballon d'Or, these are the numbers he would have in the MLS, okay? Of course, so, yeah. Uh, True. And the worst True. team in the MLS to now the best team in the MLS because the Busquets, Messi, Alba, having this positive core, even Kramaski, the collective it yeah, helps coming back players. Yeah. So, Matias and their Rojas. record, 12 games, seven, yeah. uh, 12 games, seven wins, three draws, two losses. Who are the teams yeah, that are going to well, be Inter Miami, you reckon, Breton? Oh, I love that you brought that up because, yes, <laughs> we spend a lot of time talking about Messi, as we should with this, and Inter Miami and the team that they're building. Mm-hmm. Um, but but the biggest team is the team that won last season, and that's Columbus Crew, who mm-hmm. are now in the CONCACAF Champions League final. Uh, they've beaten two two Mexican teams, two very good Mexican squads um, mm-hmm. that uh, spend more money than they do. And they have a phenomenal another. He's a little bit older. I'm still going to call him a wonder kid coach uh, in Wilfred Nancy. You might remember him mm-hmm. from Lyon days. Yes. Uh, but he is somebody that will move on. He is, in my opinion, I don't think this is actually that controversial. He's the best manager in MLS Not right Tata now. Martino. Um, he, uh, oh, yeah, he's better than Tata Martina, in my opinion, oh, right now. Ba- based on how he, Based <laughs> on how he has built this team, how he has built this team and how the how Columbus plays. Um, just go watch watch what they've done. They've mm-hmm. done phenomenally, phenomenally well with guys like Diego Rossi, um, uh, Cucho Hernandez. Um, they've mm-hmm. Aiden Morris deserves a shout. Young twenty two year old midfielder who also had a a Florian Virts like comeback type of situation where he <laughs> tore his ACL and then he had to fight his way back in and now they've won an MLS Cup and they're in the Concacaf Champions League final. Where I might add, Inter Miami is not. Ah. Okay, but listen, that's a team that plays phenomenal football. Um, they're they're not prone to the the blitzkrieg that is the Inter Miami offense, Whoa. right? I, I, I'm sorry, they are just as prone. I'm sorry, is what I meant to say uh-huh. to the blitzkrieg that is the Inter Miami offense. So if it comes down to it, and Inter Miami is a hundred percent healthy, and Columbus is a hundred percent healthy. Um, Miami even then, wins. I don't think Wilfred Nancy's uh, better managerial skills are going to get them out of this one. I think Inter Miami wins it. Now, they can't meet in MLS Cup because they're both in, the, both in the Eastern Conference. So it would be one hell of an Eastern Conference semifinal, uh, one that I think would uh, would, would break some for viewing records. Well, and yeah. in the MLS, um, top in goals, Messi. Top in assists, Messi. Top of the league, Inter Miami. Second in goal 20. contributions, it's, it, it's Messi yeah. first. Second, Luis Suarez. 19 goal That's involvements, crazy. Messi. 15 goal involvements, Suarez. This is the it, league it, of it, Lionel it, Messi it, right now. He, and he's right. It is. It, it, it was muscle memory. I mean, once they just got going in that second half, you so, knew what they were going to do because you've seen it before. You've seen it before. They were just running it back, <laughs> left and right. I mean, it was it was like Barca days uh, with some rickety knees involved. But uh, you knew Luis Suarez mm-hmm. was going to put it away. You knew there was going to be a flipping wall pass. <laughs> and how Red Bulls do not know that that is going to happen, I I don't understand. Well, but I guess you just can't stop it. But from this MLS uh, table, I can see a Cincinnati team that consistently seems to be a, a threat Decent. in the MLS. Mm-hmm. Minnesota that mm-hmm. I hope to see a lot of the winger I saw in the Under-17 World Cup. Name Fasha, right? Am I saying it mm-hmm. right? Name Fasha. Well, that uh, would be Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte. Charlotte I'm sorry. Would be Not Minnesota. Fasha yeah. Good that you know Not your Minnesota. stuff with MLS. <laughs> I do. But I, I wanted to ask you from it. Salt Lake, Cincinnati, Minnesota, Toronto, which is the toughest mm-hmm. team of these, do you reckon? 
Toughest team. I think I need to give a shout out to Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're under the radar because they've got Chicho Arango, who was phenomenal for LAFC, well, and then a little bit of a tizzy. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a tizzy sent him to Salt Lake. Um, I don't know what necessarily happened internally there, but Salt Lake gave him a home. But also Salt Lake behind that, mm -hmm. they've got a couple little wonder kids uh, in Diego Luna, who's a little bit older, and Fidel Barajas, who's mm. 17 years old, um, that could grow into something really special. But they've also made some very shrewd signings. Brian Vera, um, they've got some players that I think could turn into a decent team, but I don't, I don't mm -hmm. think they're going to necessarily hold a candle if they meet a full mm. full stretch inter Miami in MLS Cup final. I think if you're looking at a team that has some star power mm -hmm. in Lucho Acosta, uh oh. now they just signed on loan from Shakhtar Kevin Kelsey, the young striker. Mm. FC Cincinnati is like the only one I think could could give Inter a little bit of a taste of their own medicine. Mm. Maybe, maybe. But again, if if they're full health. If Suarez's knees do okay for this whole season, um, I just don't know how it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Even though I still am telling you right now, I don't think Inter Miami is going to win MLS Cup. Hey, and you have a Ryan Gold in Vancouver. There's Ricky Puig yeah. never forgets an LA Galaxy. Tiago Almada. Galaxy good. Tiago Almada mm -hmm. that people consider the best midfielder in the MLS. Yeah. At Atalanta, mm -hmm. uh, Luciano Acosta, you yeah, said from Cincinnati. There's some really good Love names him. here in the MLS. Hooey, yeah, and there needs you. to be more. O open up those purse <laughs> strings, people. And it's coming. It it'll be probably next season. Uh, but the Club World Cup, uh, that'll be really interesting to see how uh, Seattle it will be mm -hmm. part of that. Um, Seattle's also a, a team with decent uh, – uh, who is it? Who did they bring in? Pedro de la Vega, who mm. got injured. Hernan Lopez just signed for uh, San Jose. You're going to see more signings like that. They're Whoa, sticking Brunson. to the South American wonder kids. But uh, and you see so, sticking. so much good you stuff. You see sticking. Yeah. Sticking is Kevin Sullivan until he's 18 with Philadelphia, too. <laughs> the most talked 14-year-old oh, like in the world, as it seems, seems to say that I want to stay in the MLS and believe in this project. So that is well, a big uh, statement when his brother's playing for Philadelphia, Quinn Sullivan. It, it is. And, and it's also a testament, I think, to the development that's happening. And mm -hmm. because Manchester City it, it could easily say, no, listen, you're, you're, you're our investment. <laughs> you're our investment. We, we trust them. We trust Kevin Sullivan at Lommel or we trust him at uh, Hirono. Oh, that would be a little bit of a stretch right now. But well, them to say mm -hmm. it, Philadelphia is a better place for him to stay mm -hmm. because we can actually develop players alongside of City Football Group. I think that's that's the big takeaway here, at least for me. True. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, to, for him to take the field probably at some point this season as a 14 year old, maybe 15 year old uh, alongside his brother, who I think is turning into a a guy that could definitely go to the Jupiler Pro League or go to the Ear de Vizie mm -hmm. and do some really good things. Um, I, I mean, that just excites me. It excites mm -hmm. me uh, heading heading into it. And so, when you have but a I Jack think McGlynn further. Too? I mean, yeah. Oh, and Jack Lynn needs to go. Ear Ear de Vizie, come calling for him right now. Or a team like Anderlecht uh, in the Pro League. I think those are the best next steps. McGlynn has a flipping. If anyone hasn't seen it. He has scored two phenomenal goals with his left foot over the last couple uh, weeks. The Union have been trash recently, but McGlynn has been phenomenal. But, so. but you say that, but yet Philadelphia Union are a team that are second with most goal scores behind Inter Miami yeah. that are first yeah. with 32 goals. But yes, let us yeah. know. MLS Talk. Do you agree with the statement of Messi being in the Ballon d'Or Talk if he's the player of the tournament of Copa America and the best player in the MLS we're for sure going to talk, we're going to talk again about this statement, but let us know down below your thoughts in the comment section and like this video for more MLS talk. Please. We'll touch more on MLS if we see the love of the community. Thank you for so sure. much for listening to episode 155 until now. And thank you people for going bold and listening to the Monday show with me, Alex and Bretton going bold.